All great ideas have something in common. Their simplicity and functionality make them seem self-obvious. Fan is on, bed is hot. And once you've seen the solution, you wonder why nobody ever thought of it before. The simplicity with this design is deceptive and there's a lot going on here, so let's talk about it. By far and away the most underrated or unappreciated aspect and key variable to get right as you get more advanced with your uh, FDM 3D printing skills is to keep the moisture out of your filament. You have to have dry filament to get really good quality prints. And just to prove my point, here's uh, some videos that pop up when you search dry filament printer. And of course the number one video here gonna be the scientific analysis or engineering analysis by Stefan there at CNC Kitchen. Scrolling down a little, you'll find Tom's video and hey, Who's that guy? Who's that handsome guy right there? So there's one of my videos. Oh, the original, the OG here, Rich Rap. Love this guy, Richard Horn. It's such a tragedy that he's not making videos anymore. Um, I think I heard a rumor that he still works in the background in 3D printing. Uh, but yeah, such a great talent that we lost when he stopped making videos. It sucks. Doesn't it suck when people stop making videos when channels just go dead? <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm here on the list again. There I am again. So I've made two videos on the subject. And those two videos covered this uh, filament dryer that I made out of a, um, what is it, a food dehydrator? And I happened to price that at like $35 at the time from Walmart. You can see this is the lid. This is where all the magic happens. And there is the, uh, the thing that I made. Go watch the video if you want to learn all about this. But the key here is you see the, the center there? That's where the air comes blowing out of. So the fan blows air down the center and it sucks it from inside. Actually, I think I got it backwards. It blows air out the sides here. So there's a gap under there where my fingernail is right now. And then it sucks it up from the center. So we get a nice flow around the filament spools where the air is flowing down the middle and up the sides. Basically, this is an air fryer for 3D printer filament. 60 degrees Celsius, 65, something like that is what it gets up to. And it's the airflow that really helps to dry the filament out because that's not a very high temperature. However, um, you know, we'll get to that. Hold on a second. Let's talk about the, uh, the vacuum chamber first. So the best solution that I've come up with is to first dry my filament in the, in the air dryer there for like, I don't know, four hours. Maybe only, I've done it as little as like an hour and a half before sticking it in the vacuum chamber here. And what I'm basically doing is a poor man's version of freeze drying. And freeze drying is pretty cool. Um, I'm not gonna get into the science here because this is not a science video. It's a how to make your filament dry for cheap video. Okay, so this is an awesome solution though. You absolutely need to get one of these if you want to store filament for any lengths of time. Even filament that you get unopened from the factory in those um, those sealed you know, vacuum bags, even the metallicized vacuum bags, they all eventually will let the, uh, the, the moisture from the air get into the filament. So. If you're gonna you know, have filament that's gonna sit for any period of time, in other words, you're not blowing through filament because you're not like a large production shop, you need a vacuum dryer to really get, get that great storage. And of course, this is the vacuum pump that allows you to suck the, all the atmospheres, suck the atmospheres right out of that pot. Now, a quick side note, if you do end up getting one of those vacuum pots, put a little of the oil from your vacuum pump and put it on the silicone seal. That will help that vacuum pot stay under vacuum for months at a time, which, I mean, if it's under vacuum, your filament's not gonna, it's not gonna get wet. It's not gonna soak the humidity straight out of the air like it's so wants to do. Okay, speaking of which, which filaments love the moisture out of the air? Obviously, we all know that ABS does. Nylon, uh, TPU, I don't know, how many of you knew that TPU soaks the moisture out of the air? Um, we've got, what is it? Oh, polycarbonate, that's a, oh man. Polycarbonate will get wet in like three hours, four hours, not even, it gets wet snap your fingers, look at it wrong and it's wet. <laughs> so if you wanna successfully print with polycarbonate, you've got to keep it either sort of heated above the ambient room temperature or in a vacuum pot, yeah, vacuum chamber. But even the lowly, simple, basic PLA can have issues with moisture retention. Now, it's not the case with pure PLA, especially pure PLA bought at a like a reputable um, you know, house, a reputable, website or something like that, you know. If you're getting high quality PLA and it's pure, you're not gonna have an issue. Just leave it on the shelf, print when you need it. And that's also pretty much the case 
for PUTG, and that's the reason. Pretty much, that explains why PLA and PETG are the two filament types that everybody prints with all the time. 95% of 3D printing probably happens with those two filament types. Th that drying solution that I showed you, which works, uh, costs as much as an Ender 3 or more than an Ender 3. And for what? Oh, that's so not fun. Just to keep your print dry, you're gonna spend like 300 bucks, ugh. So in comes some crappy Chinese brand, Sun Lu in this case. Uh, this was provided to me by Michael Hathaway. Thank you, Michael. And I think I have an older version here. I think they fixed this, but you know how China does. They release something that looks, look at this, designed by an industrial designer. Looks like something that Apple might produce, right? Oh, it's so beautiful. And it's covering up the fact that it's crap. <laughs> it's just a, a little um, heating element from like a, an, an iguana enclosure, a reptile enclosure, right? And it got a timer on it with a little LED screen. So it's just, it's just crap, it's just cheap. And they don't want you to burn your house down so they put a timer on it. They'll only let you keep this on for a certain number of hours and it's not enough. It's not enough hours. So you're constantly having to go, oh yeah, I gotta go reset my, my filament dryer. So every what, two hours or four hours or something like that. Ugh. So not only that, it will only get to 50 degrees C if you're lucky. So mm, yeah, that's not good. Doesn't get hot enough for the high temperature or high performance plastics and it won't cook it for long enough. So this, not a great solution. And I don't know about the current versions of it might work. Now, one thing good that I can say about this is low temperature. You wanna be like five or 10 degrees above room temperature to, to bake the water out of your PLA. And the reason for that is that PLA anneals. So PLA is kind of unique in uh, 3D printer plastics that we use. Uh, I don't think other plastics, in fact, I know that CNC Kitchen did a video about it. Um, so other plastics do not do the annealing thing that, that, that PLA does. But you don't want to anneal your filament when it's still filament. You want to anneal your finished parts. And if you anneal the filament itself, you're going to have a hard time. It's not going to be fun. Probably you're just going to throw it away if you try to print with it. Okay, but that doesn't matter, right? Why would you even dry your PLA? It doesn't get wet. Well, it does get wet if it has additives in it. So all of your fancy PLA uh, blended plastics, or in this case, there's two additives. I have uh, basically bamboo fiber, so it's called wood fill. Oh, and I also have, what is it, um, gypsum. Just the same stuff out of your drywall. So take some drywall, crush it up, that white powder, but you have to bake it in an autoclave at some ungodly high temperature for some crazy number of hours, and it becomes anhydrous. So anhydrous gypsum is uh, the secret ingredient to that uh, 3D printer filament company there on the West Coast. Hey, everybody buys it. They all think that that's the, the highest quality, that's the name brand you need, but you guys, $80 for a kilogram. The last time I checked, and it's probably up to $100 by now in the pandemic, for a kilogram of PLA with drywall dust in it. Tell me they're not ripping you off night and day, shamelessly, blatantly. <laughs> okay, so the the, uh, the anhydrous gypsum here is the nucleating agent, which allows the, um, you know, the, the polymer chains to sort of structure themselves from the little bits of, um, of the, the drywall dust. So yeah, anyway, I went to China. I had them make me some. This is that drywall dust plus the bamboo fibers. So this looks kind of, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it, it's got that same texture as that company loves to sell you on. Oh, it's got this real matte finish, the blah, blah. Yeah, right, okay, so whatever. Also, who's gonna bother to anneal their parts, especially when parts warp and shrink and do all kinds of funky stuff? So uh, it's just, it's such a gimmick, you guys. Uh, I hope very few of you got ripped off to that tune, because that that is way too much money to be spending on filament. But yeah, I need to dry this filament because the bamboo fibers will soak up the moisture. They do. And as they get passed through the nozzle, the like a kernel of popcorn, the little bits of water molecules stuck in the bamboo fibers explode. They boil and they pop and they make an air bubble. And you can listen to your nozzle as you're printing and you hear that snap, crackle, pop. There's your problem. Now you've got bad print. So I need to dry this, but you only wanna be five to 10 degrees above your ambient room temperature, which is like this. And that way you avoid annealing this. Um, so yeah, but still, it's not good. You really wanna use your fancy PLA as quickly as you can uh, after you buy it because um, it's really hard to get the moisture out of it. But that's not the case for your higher performance plastics, ABS, polycarbonate, um, nylon, TPU, all these things that soak up water, all you need to do is bake them. 
stick them in, in an air environment and you're good to go. Most people, when they go bake, means they're just gonna stick it in their home oven and hope that it all turns out well. But everything changed for me four days ago when Wolf Thorne left this comment here on one of my dry your 3D printer filament videos. And I saw that comment and I was like, what an amazing and simple idea. No need to go buy a stupid product. Your printer has a built-in filament dryer right there. And that is the bed. So of course, you guys know how I am about giving uh, original creators their credit. So I wanted to credit Wolf if this was his idea. And he said he had the idea um, in isolation. So he came up with it himself and he told me I was welcome to use it. But you know, maybe, maybe somebody else came up with it first. So I went looking. There it is, top of the search results here on YouTube, a video by iHeart3D Printing. This guy, he is super clever. He's actually quite active on my channel. I consider him a friend of the channel. So, wow, talented. I knew he was talented from his comments. Uh, clearly got some insights and look, he made a whole video about using your bed for 3D printing. And so basically the technique is, if you turn your 3D printer bed to 70 degrees, you put a cardboard box lined with tin foil on top of the, over to cover the, uh, the, the roll of filament and you come back some hours later and it's nice and dry. And I think he's the only one that's talking about this. So I think he might have, uh, well, I'm gonna give him credit for being the first one on, on YouTube anyway. And look, he posted that two years ago, January 16th of 2019. Here's a Reddit post from two years ago also, but they don't give the exact date, not that I can see. That's kind of a bummer about Reddit, huh? I'd like to see if uh, iHeart3D Printer got the idea from this Reddit post. Here's one from June of 2019, so he probably got the idea from iHeart3D Printing's video. And of course, on the Prusa forum, they're talking about it as well, but this is from 2020, so nothing original here, including this whole write-up. Look at this, that, uh, that nice little table tells you how long you need to bake everything for. Well, it seems that the Prusa community follows in the footsteps of the Prusa company, where they don't like to credit the place where they get their ideas or their science from. I'll bet if it was CNC Kitchen showing a Prusa video or showing a Prusa printer in the video, then they give them credit. But in this case, it's from this company, Print Dry. Here it is, Print Dry. And you can see, hey, look, there's that same table right above my head, right? So I do not condone Print Dry. These guys are just taking um, food dehydrators and marking them up and selling to you for a, a, a stupid price. So just get a food dehydrator. Here you can get one at Walmart for like 40 bucks. Uh, this is the one right here, the $79 one. That's basically the one that I rebuilt into my filament dryer. And of course, they're, you're looking at the like Sun Lu version, one of these things. And it's gonna be at least 40 bucks, sometimes as high as 80 bucks for one of these things. So yeah, now we can come up with a cheaper solution. And that's what I've been working on right here. You guys can see it. Uh, this is the, um, the CAD model. This is actually the original CAD model where I designed the, uh, the, the dryer that you guys saw. So the idea here is just to use your 3D printer bed, which is this square, and to create an airflow with a fan, so an active airflow environment. So to basically turn your 3D printer's bed into a food dehydrator or filament dehydrator. So I think this is gonna work swimmingly. Let me finish drawing this up in CAD and get it on the printer to test it out. And as a control for the, you know, kind of experiment to come, I'm printing out this stringing test with this very wet ABS filament. It's been sitting in the open air for like a week or so. And listen to those popping noises and look at the terrible, terrible oozing, just nasty. Also some pretty nasty stringing on this first test print of the design. And look, the hot glue got melted sitting so close to the 100 degree bed during the drying. Speaking of the drying cycle, I put this chamber thermistor inside the box just to see what the air temperature is inside of the drying environment. And even though it's only 50% of the bed temperature, the desiccant indicator balls here uh, tell me that the filament got pretty dry. So let's take the fan off and pull the filament out and do another test print. But look, the PLA prototype did not fare well sitting on that 100 degree bed. And yeah, this is printing so much better, you guys, but it's not perfect. It's still a little bit wet. You guys hear the occasional snapping, crackling noise there, and we can do better than this collapsed PLA test print. And that's what I've done here with this ABS geometry, which made this test print, and let's compare all three here. 
This 80 millimeter computer case fan is what I was using to move the air around inside of the dryer, but I'm a little bit skeptical that it's the right solution. And one of the reasons for that skepticism is that it's a 12 volt fan and the printer runs on 24 volts, which means that I'm currently running this fan off its own dedicated power supply plugged into the wall. So I've changed up the design to now use this 24 volt 50 millimeter hot end cooling fan, which can plug in right here to the part cooling fan wiring which I can then control through the Duet interface on my web browser. The new design is a lot more low profile, but I'm uncertain uh, as to the performance. Will it move more air than the larger fan? To figure out the answer, I bought myself a thermal imaging camera and looking at the bed here, you can see that um, the 80 millimeter fan is not actually doing a very good job out of those vents to cool the bed down. In contrast, check out those nice dark lines coming out of all eight vents of the cooling tower when I switch to the 50 millimeter fan. Yeah, this is a total winner. And if you wanna get your hands on it, yeah, become a Patreon supporter. I share any and all files that I make in the course of creating these videos um, with my Patreon supporters. It's my way of saying thank you to those wonderful guys who helped me to keep this channel going. By the way, these are them. So thank you guys so much for your contribution. Now, there's a few details that I wanna to discuss to help you guys create a better solution than what I showed in the video, starting with this cardboard box. And uh, you should probably make one that's more uh, insulated than I have. This is a double wall cardboard, some pretty stout stuff, and that airspace in between the two walls does make for some insulation. This does a good job of insulating, but it could be um, better. And that would hold the heat in quite a bit more substantially. You saw that at 100 degrees, I was only able to get the air temperature inside of here up to like, what was it, 54 degrees? Now that was with the, um, not with this nice fan, the one that really does the good wind. It was with the, the larger fan. So maybe with this fan really stripping that heat off of the bed, I would actually get better um, you know, air temperature inside of the chamber, but I think you'd still benefit from putting some sort of foam on the outside of this or maybe using two walls or, or two thicknesses of cardboard. So you would have like four walls basically, um, something like that, but, uh, you could benefit from more insulation. Now, the difference between this and a heated chamber is that you do not want it 100% sealed. You want to have some airflow because the air inside of the chamber is becoming more moist as the filament has the moisture driven out of it. But if you do want to seal the, your chamber to the bed and make some sort of an airtight um, you know, application where, where it sits on the bed and no air is able to escape from underneath, you could poke a couple of little holes in the box and I think that would be enough. You don't need a lot of airflow, just a little bit. Another thing to do is to add some under bed insulation like this piece here. Um, so that would help out a lot as well. I foresee this solution being absolutely ideal and it should just come in the box with your 3D printer um, when we start seeing printer chambers coming onto the market. So um, I really do think that's the future. Printing inside of a heated chamber is so advantageous. I don't see any other option uh, as far as like iterating and making things better with 3D printers. So you wouldn't need to have the dedicated box to sit on the bed if your whole um, chamber was already enclosed. So you could just put the filament on this and let this just kind of cycle the air. So yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna be a, a great solution going forward into the future. Now, let's talk about storage solutions because you don't wanna to have to be drying your filament every single time you wanna do a 3D print, right? That's a pain in the butt. So at the very least, you need some sort of like a sealed Tupperware uh, with some desiccant in it. That's kind of the, the bare minimum. And that will delay the uh, the moisture ingress into your filament, um, but it doesn't, it's, it, it delays it. It doesn't actually fully prevent it. To fully prevent it, I think there's one of two solutions. First of which is the vacuum chamber. That's my preferred solution. And let me reiterate that you can store in a vacuum chamber for months on end, as long as you get that oil on both sides of the silicone uh, seal so that the, there's just no air can get into that vacuum chamber with the oil. It's kind of like licking a suction cup. 
before you stick it to, to glass, right? It's that same idea. So it really does keep that vacuum chamber sealed. But, you know, Rich Rap, back to that guy who I said, the OG, like he's just so talented. And one of the, the jaw-dropping things that he came up with to me was the idea to use the reptile um, mat, the, the, the heated mat for your reptile cages uh, in a sealed Tupperware box. And the reptile mat will maybe get you know, five, 10 degrees above ambient. So room temperature plus 10 degrees. But that 10 degrees is basically kind of the same as having a vacuum. It's it's vacuums and heat kind of go hand in hand. So that's another fantastic solution. And you might find that it's less expensive to DIY that than it is to uh, purchase a, a vacuum chamber. So uh, look into that as well uh, as a storage solution. So bare minimum, you reuse the the bags that came with your, if you have one of the resealable ones and keep the desiccant in it. When you're doing this, dry the desiccant as well. And that will that will get you through. But for more advanced users, probably going to want to build Rich Wraps solution or get a vacuum chamber. Okay, a special thank you to these guys, my producers and executive producers. You guys really helped me keep the, keep the channel going. And yeah, I appreciate it. So yeah, the reason you're not seeing a lot of videos from me these days is because I've moved into a new house. I actually moved to the Midwest. I've got a uh, pole barn. I'm building an office in the pole barn to really kind of step up my video making. Uh, instead of having just a, a room in the house to call my office, uh, I can now be separate and be a bit more professional about the whole affair. So currently, I just got so excited with uh, w about this project that I had to make this video right in the middle of all that work. So that's why you're seeing this, but I'm just filming in one of the, the rooms of the new house. But this is going to be quite a bit different going forward. And so thank you for having the patience. Thank you for staying subscribed to me and continuing to support me. That's it for this video. See you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.